Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Enjoyment, Brooklyn Dodger Baseball. For real enjoyment, get Schaefer. It's real beer. For real, real enjoyment, Hello. get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Mm. For real, real enjoyment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. For real, real refreshment, say it. Get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Yeah. For real, real refreshment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. Yes, here come the Dodgers, and this is Ben Scully, along with Jerry Doggett, inviting you to stay with us now as they invade Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia to play the Phillies in the final game of 1957. All the doings sent you away with the compliments of the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of America's oldest lager beer, Schaefer, and also with the compliments of the American Tobacco Company on behalf of Lucky Strike, a light smoke, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. And now, before the ball game gets underway, for real enjoyment, have yourself a foaming glass of Schaefer. It's real beer. This broadcast, authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated, solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated is prohibited. And so it's come down to this, September the 29th, 1957, and the final game of the year, the Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies. And in the closer, it'll be Roger Craig and Seth Moorhead. Craig, with a record of six victories and eight defeats, is two and two against Philadelphia in lifetime five and four. For the Phillies, Seth Moorhead, young left-hander, making his first start against Brooklyn, he is 0-1. So it'll be Moorhead and Craig in the final game of the year. The announcement being made and our crowd standing now for our national anthem. Philadelphia defensively for you now. The battery of Moorhead and Joe Lanette. At first it's Ed Boucher, then Solly Hemus, Chico Fernandez, and Willie Jones. In the outfield, Harry Anderson in left, Don Landrum in center, and Richie Ashburn around in right. Jake Petler going to his first base coaching box, and over at third, Billy Herman. For Brooklyn, Jim Gilliam to lead it off, then Simoli and Perillo. Carl Perillo getting a shot in there on the final day will be in right field. Hodges in the cleanup spot. Bob Kennedy in left, Randy Jackson at third, Don Zimmer the shortstop, Joe Pignatano the catcher, and Roger Craig the pitcher. Jim Gilliam coming up right now and coming up for the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, Brewers of Schaefer Beer. On the last one for 57, here's Jerry Doggett. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. Jim Gilliam standing in there, batting from the right side, facing left-hander Seth Moorhead. The windup in the first pitch. Fastball comes down low, and it's ball one. 
Well, it's kind of an oddity for the Dodgers to look at a left-hander. Right-handed pitchers have started against the last 47 games against the Dodgers with Antonelli, the last left-hander, on August the 7th at Jersey City. Here's a high pop fly into short center field. Backing up for it, Sally Hemus. He makes the grab for the out. So Gilliam pops out to Hemus in short center. It's one up and one down. Coming on now will be Gino Simoli with Carl Farillo on deck and Gil Hodges to follow. Seth Moorhead making his first major league start. His record, no wins, one loss. He's relieved 33 times this year for Mayo Smith and the Philadelphia Phillies. Fastball is ripped in for a call, strike one. Gino Simoli, deep in the batter's box. Gino hitting 294 with 10 home runs, 57 runs batted in. Here's the pitch. Curveball is in the dirt, and it's ball one, strike one. One one count, one out, none on. Top of the first inning at Philadelphia. Moorhead into the windup delivers. Samoli takes it outside for a ball, and the count is two one. Left-handers have started five times against Brooklyn this year, three times by Antonelli, once by Pete Burnside, and once by Louis Arroyo. The lefties have won none and lost four. Antonelli two, Burnside and Arroyo each one. Here's the pitch. Inside for a ball three, three and one now to Simoli. Left-handed relief pitchers have an 0-2 record against the Dodgers, losses by Davis and Mizell. So the Brooklyn record against lefties this year is six wins, no losses. Samoli swings and fouls it up in the upper deck, and the count is full, three and two. Three balls, two strikes on Gino Samoli. Carl Farolo on deck. Here's the pitch. A liner hitting the right center field. Ashburn coming on, can't play it. It bounces in for a base hit. Ashburn's throw is back in to Hemus, and Simoli is on with a single to right center. Hit number one, and the batter now will be Carl Farillo. Carl is hitting 307 as the top Dodger hitter. Now looks to first base to Simoli. Delivers to the plate. Perillo takes it inside. Ball one. Carl back in the lineup after being out over a week with a pulled leg muscle. One ball, no strikes. Moorhead out of a stretch. Eyes Simoli off first. Gino a two-step lead. The pitch to the plate. Curve for a strike. And the count is 1-1. One count. There's a ground ball hit through the hole to left field for a base hit. Simoli into second base, holds up now, and then starts for third as Anderson bobbles the ball. The throw is not in time. Perillo slides into second base, and the play there not in time. So it's a base hit for Carl Perillo, a ground single to the left side. Anderson kicked the ball around in left field. Simoli, after holding up at second base, tore into third. The throw to third baseman Jones was not in time, and Jones then fired back to second base. Not in time there, as he must made a tag on Ferrillo too late. So it'll be a single and an error. A single by Ferrillo to left field and an error by the left fielder Anderson to advance the runners an extra base. Here's Gil Hodges at bat now. Gil hung on 97 runs batted in, has a chance right now to pick up two or three. Here's the pitch. A drive hit the center field is well tagged. Over for it goes Landrum, makes the grab. Here's the runner tag. The throw comes to third base and is cut off by Fernandez. In comes Simoli to score the Dodgers' lead. Hodges with a scoring fly ball hit deep to center field. Landrum hauling it down. Simoli scoring after the catch and Perillo going to third. So run batted in number 98 for Hodges put in the books. Gill needs to get two more later in the game. Here's Bob Kennedy coming on now. Bob playing in left field. Bob has one home run, four runs batted in, used mainly as a pinch hitter this season. 
We have two outs, man at third base, and the pitch down is in for a strike. Moorhead finding the outside corner with a fastball. Strike one count to Bob Kennedy. Randy Jackson on deck with Don Zimmer to follow. Moorhead into the windup, and here's his pitch. Kennedy takes a strike two. Fastball at the belt. Nothing in two count on Bob. Final game of the year. The Dodgers and the Phillies winding up 1957 season here at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. Moorhead into the windup. Here's the pitch. Curveball bounced up the third baseline foul. Billy Herman fields it in the coaching lines. Strike two on Kennedy. Here's the pitch. Bob swings and misses. Strike three. Kennedy down on strikes. Side retired. Moorhead getting his first strike out of the game. And the Dodgers in the first inning show one run. Two hits. One error by the Phillies. And for Brooklyn, one man left on. So at the end of a half inning of play, it is Brooklyn one and the Phillies coming to bat. Now here's a word from Vince. Well, say, did you ever stop to think how you buy some things because they're new and others because they're not? Well, if you're in something like a car or a washing machine, you naturally would like the very latest model. But when it comes to beer, now there's where only good old-time brewing skill pays off. And I mean Schaefer beer, of course. Only in Schaefer do you get the flavor and satisfaction that comes from over 115 years of brewing experience. Yes, sir, Schaefer is America's oldest lager beer. And boy, what a wonderful tradition of fine brewing goes into every can and bottle of Schaefer. The selection of the rich barley malt, tangy hops, and other fine natural ingredients. Well, it all adds up to one thing, enjoyment. And enjoyment is yours in every golden amber glass of Schaefer beer. For real enjoyment, you choose Schaefer every time. It's real beer. You see that big ad in the newspapers the other day showing the first Schaefer family meaning, of course, the folks who work for Schaefer, along with the officials of the brand-new company, and they were out on their first big picnic back in 1842. Well, it makes you think about what a great company to last that long and continue to serve you beer at its best. So the next time you want a cold glass of Schaefer, remember 115 years of brewing skill back of every glass of Schaefer beer. Okay, and here's Jerry. All right, Ashburn is the batter as Craig uh, fires the first pitch. It's swung on and foul just outside third. Strike one to Ritchie. 297 average for Ashburn. No home runs for the year. 33 runs batted in. Don Landrum on deck and Ed Boucher to follow. Roger Craig into the windup. Delivers outside for a ball, and the count is 1-1. Craig is 6-8 and eight on the year and has a 2-2 record against the Phillies this season. 5-4 and four lifetime. The Dodgers lead 1-0. Here's the pitch. High bounces off Pignatano's glove back to the wire. And it's two balls, one strike on Ashburn. 2-1 the count. Ashburn at bat with Landrum on deck. Boucher to follow. The Dodger run in the first inning was unearned. A pair of singles and an error. And then a scoring fly by Gil Hodges got the run in. Craig bends down looking for the sign. Ashburn steps out a minute to get a handful of dirt. Jackson playing in a third to guard against the bunt by Ashburn. Ashburn very fast and a good bunter. Likes to dump him. Here's a fastball for a strike two. The count, 2-2. Two, two. Don Zimmer at shortstop. Don a little bit under the weather today. Says, here we go to the last day of the season. I feel like I'm catching the flu. Gilliam at second base, and at first base, Gil Hodges. Kennedy in left, Simoli in center, Perillo in right. A fastball is outside, ball three, three and two. One of the few times of the season, manager Walt Austin inserting his lineup that he calls his left-hand lineup, going against left-hand pitching, using all the right-handers. Here's the pitch. A bouncer hit toward shortstop. Big hop to Zimmer. Guns his throw, in time for the out, one away. Ashburn bounces out. Zimmer to Hodges. 
Here's Landrum coming on. Now Don Landrum, the center fielder, had one for four in his major league uh, debut yesterday. Landrum, a left-hand hitter, hit 300 down at Miami. Craig into the windup. Here's the pitch. In for a strike at the knees on the inside corner. Nothing and one on the left-hand batter. Boucher on deck and Anderson to follow. Here's a curve for a strike, and it's nothing and two. Craig took a little off that time and got it in there around the letters. And the count, no balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Up high for a ball. One and two now with one out, none on. The Dodgers lead one nothing, bottom of the first inning. Here's the windup and pitch. Curveball is outside. Ball two. 2-2 two -two to Landrum. Now Roger Craig checks his sign. The windup and here's the pitch. Swan and miss. Strike three. Fastball poured in and Landrum goes down on strikes. Strikeout number one for Craig. Two away and Ed Boucher coming on. Boucher hitting 291, 16 home runs, 74 runs batted in. Boucher, a left-hand hitter, and the Phillies rookie of the year, named by the Sporting News. Here's a fastball in for a strike at the outside corner. Roger Craig, 6 and 8 on the year. the pitch. Curve strike, and it's nothing and two on Boucher. Craig into the windup, pitching to Boucher. A little high for ball, and the count one ball, two strikes. the pitch. Fastball high for ball two and it's 2-2. Two -two. Well, the Dodgers will be making their various ways toward their homes after today's ball game. A lot of the boys leaving right from Philadelphia. A few going back into New York before checking out for home. Some, of course, live in the New York area. Some have wintertime occupations. Some just going to take it easy. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Curve is low for ball and the count 3-2. A number of the Dodgers will be going off to play winter ball in Cuba, Venezuela, and Dominican Republic. Some selling cars, some playing golf. There's a foul ball out of play down the left side, and the count to Boucher stays at 3-2. The most unusual wintertime occupation by a Dodger will be Joe Becker's job. Joe, after a few days of hunting and fishing in Missouri, will go to Arkansas and train mules. <laughs> That's a real tough job. And here's ball four to Boucher. He's on with a walk. So base on balls number one given up by Craig, and it brings up Harry Anderson, left-hand hitting left fielder. Yeah, we asked Joe about training those mules, and he says, well, pretty good job. I'm not kidding you about it. I said, what's the hardest to do, train mules or train these pitchers. He says, well, pitchers, of course, will listen, but every now and then you get one that's about as stubborn as a mule, and then you have to really crack the whip on him. Anderson takes one in the dirt. It skips through Pignatano back to the wire. Down to second base goes Boucher, makes his turn there and holds up as Pignatano goes back to the screen to retrieve, and it is a wild pitch by Roger Craig. Boucher on second base, and the count ball one on Anderson. Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale will spend the winter in the Army. They'll be out next April. Ball 
one count to Anderson. Deshaies on second base, two away here in the first inning. Craig sets, delivers. The curveball is low, and it's ball two. Brooklyn leads one to nothing. The Dodgers got a run in the first inning. Singles by Simoli and Perillo with an error in left field by Anderson. There's a bounder foul hit down the first baseline. Wally Moses and Andy Semenik over there today. Wally's on the third baseline. Ball went by Andy. And the count, two balls, one strike on Anderson. The F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn sending you this final broadcast of the year from Philadelphia. Our Schaefer Award winners for the week, by the way, are Gino Simoli and Danny McDevitt. All right, a 2-1 count on Anderson. Swing and a foul tip. Bounced off umpire Tony Venzone back to the wire. And it's 2-2. Venzone inspects his mask. Got a dead in it from that foul ball. 2-2 on Anderson. Harry batting 270 with 17 home runs. Roger Craig out of a stretch. Eyes Boucher at second. Delivers. He struck him out. A swing and a miss on a fastball board in there. And Anderson down on strikes. For Craig, strikeout number two. And the side retired with no runs. No hits. No errors. And one man left on. So at the end of one inning of play, it is Brooklyn one and the Phillies nothing. All right, Ben. Well, friends, I don't know about you, but our idea of the height of convenience is to save ourselves steps, you know, especially when there are guests in the house and you'd like to spend more time seeing them, not running back and forth to the kitchen. Well, that in a nutshell is why the Schaefer party size full quart bottle is ideal. Boy, you get yourself a supply of Schaefer quarts when you have company coming in and you're all set. Because when you open up a Schaefer full quart bottle, you can pour out four good full glasses of real enjoyment and enjoy it they will if they go for taste that's as bright and fresh as a friendly greeting. You serve your guests Schaefer beer from convenient party size full quart bottles. You'll appreciate the ease. You'll all appreciate the taste. It's real beer. The end of one inning, the Dodgers won Philadelphia nothing. Brooklyn coming up in the second inning with Randy Jackson to lead the parade and right back to Jerry. Okay, Vinny. Randy Jackson steps in. Randy hitting 2-0-2. Two two. Has two home runs. 16 runs batted in. On the mound, Seth Moorhead working for the Phillies today. Jackson, Zimmer, Pignatano. First three to appear in the second. Curveball is in on the outside corner for a call strike. Oh, one to Ransom. Randy will spend the winter selling insurance down in Athens, Georgia. Fastball is low and the count is 1-1. Here's the windup and pitch. Randy takes it inside. Ball two. A little low also. Two balls, one strike on Randy. Now the windup, the 2 1 pitch. Foul ball hit back upstairs, up to the edge of the roof, and back down again. And an even count of 2 and 2. Here's the 2 2 windup, and the pitch is way outside high for ball three. And a Jackson, a full count, three balls, two strikes. winds and fires. Randy takes it high and he's on with a walk. So, base on balls number one given up by Moorhead. Coming on now will be Don Zimmer. Zimmer hitting 222. Don's going to take off tonight for St. Petersburg, Florida. Play a little golf, do a little fishing and then go to work in the construction business. Pitch down is swung on and missed for a strike one to Zimmer. 
Seth Moorhead, working for the Phillies, led the International League in strikeouts last year with 168. Here's a fastball up high, and the count is even 1-1. He's making his first start of this year. He's been in 33 games in relief. Record against the league, 0-1. Here's the pitch. Taken high for ball two in the count now. Two balls, one strike to Don Zimmer. 2-1 reading. Pass ball in at the hands for a call strike in the count 2-2. Two, two. Even up to Zimmer now. One on, nobody out. Dodgers lead. One to nothing. Playing in the top half of the second inning. Zimmer at bat. Jackson a few steps off first. Moorhead eyes the runner now. Here's the pitch. Zimmer swings and misses strike three. Don down on strikes. And that's the second strikeout chalked up by Moorhead. Joe Pignatano coming on. Joe hitting 273. One home run, uh, one run batted in, no home runs, and three hits, 11 trips to the plate. So Pignantano up there with one on, one out, and the Dodgers out in front, one to nothing. Curveball is outside, ball one. The Philly infield playing double play depth, Jones at third, Fernandez at short, Hemus at second, Boucher at first base holding Jackson on, Anderson, Landrum, and Ashburn in the outfield. Here's the pitch. A bouncer at the third baseline. Jones makes his play to Hemus for one. Back to first base. Not in time. Take the tunnel. Beats it out. Joe runs pretty good, and he was down that line in a hurry and avoids the double play. Out at second base is Jackson from Jones to Hemus. So a force play. Let's take the tunnel on first and brings on Roger Craig. Craig has four for 27, which figures out at 148. No runs batted in, and no home runs for Rod. It's Brooklyn 1 and Philadelphia nothing here in the season finale at Philadelphia. Well, I don't know how you fans feel about it, but it seems to us that the season just got started a few days ago and that really has flown by in a hurry. All right, take the tunnel off first, and Moorhead pitches to Craig. Roger takes a strike. Fastball at the knees, and it's 0-1. Strike one count, Craig waiting. Here's the pitch. On the corner for a call, strike two. 0 and 2 on Roger. Pignatano at first base on a force play. Two outs. Dodgers got a run in the first to lead, 1 nothing. Seth Moorhead, left hander for the Phillies, checks. Here's the pitch. Foul ball hit back upstairs. And the count stays, strike two on Craig. Oh, and two pitch. Craig swings a bounding ball out towards second. Hemus comes in, shovels to Fernandez. Force play on Pignatano, and the side retired. So for the Dodgers in the second, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. So at the end of an inning and a half, the score is Brooklyn 1 and Philadelphia nothing. And now here's Ben. And you know, back a hundred or more years ago, back in the days when folks around New York first began to enjoy Schaefer beer, all the beer was sold, and most of it was consumed right in the neighborhood tavern. The tavern was a friendly place where you stopped off to chat and relax and quench your thirst. You know what? Well, sure, the tavern still is a place where you stop off to chat and relax and quench your thirst. I don't know how much chatting you've a mind to do, but I can tell you the relaxing and the thirst quenching is mighty good these days. As is the shape of beer. It comes in nowadays in fine stainless steel barrels. And your friend the bartender has it all ready for you at just the right temperature for wonderful, light, and lively flavor to give you beer at its flavorful best. So for real enjoyment, stop in at your favorite tavern and make it Schaefer beer. 
It's real beer. The late columnist of the Journal American, E.V. Durling, used to have a little section, and he'd refer to people as young old-timers. And then he'd come up with a fact, and if you remembered it, you would be in that class. And I guess you would be considered a young old-timer, talking about beer and Schaefer beer and the neighborhood tavern. Do you remember the expression around your neighborhood of rushing the growler? It might be just a New York expression. I remember when they rushed the growler. One nothing, Brooklyn. Bottom of the second inning. Willie Jones, the batter, and here's Jerry. All right, Jones stepping in, hitting 220, nine home runs, 47 runs about them. Jones at bat, Hemus on deck, and Fernandez to follow. Roger Craig rubs up the baseball, getting set to go. Rods into the windup, and here's his pitch to Jones. High pop foul coming back. It'll be out of play up on the roof. Strike one on Jones. Here's the pitch. Curveball for a strike two. Hit the outside corner, and Jones had a look at it. 0 2 to Willie. Outfield and infield playing Jones to pull. Right hand batter. 0 2 pitch. Outside for a ball. 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes. Jones at bat, Hemus on deck, and Fernandez to follow. The wind up and pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Jones down on strike. Strikeout number three for Craig. And before Hemus comes on, We'll pause now for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO, Albany, New York. The Capital District's most talked about station with downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. Sally Hemus at bat now, a little left-hand hitter, playing second base, hitting 190. Takes Craig's first offering in for a call strike. Craig has struck out three, has walked one. The Dodgers lead 1-0. We're playing in the last half of the second. Roger into the windup, and here's his pitch. Foul ball. Cut back of the plate. Pignatano giving it a chase now. Back toward the box seat. And can't play it. It's just out of play. <laughs> what a couple of teenage girls fighting for that one. Bouncing along after that baseball. One of them's a little older than a teenager, though. They really went scrapping for it. I mean, they're going after that baseball. Strike two count on Hemus. Craig into the windup, and here's his pitch. Fly ball into short center field. Zimmer goes out, makes his call now, and turns, makes the grab for the up, two away. Hemus popping to Zimmer in short center. Two up, two down, and here's Chico Fernandez coming on. Chico is up there, now turns and goes back to the bat rack. He forgot to get the helmet, now he puts it on and comes on out again. Fernandez hitting 262, five home runs, 51 runs batted in. Two outs, Roger Craig for the Dodgers. Brooklyn leads 1-0 on a run picked up in the first inning on two singles and error and a scoring fly by Gil Hodges. Fastball is over for a strike. Chico had a look at it, now goes out and snatches it a handful of dirt. 0-1 count on Fernandez. Jackson playing up close to third, even with a bag. About three steps off the line. The bouncer foul past third. And it's strike two on Fernandez. Roger Craig into the windup. Here's his pitch. Curveball is a little low. Ball one. One and two. half of the second inning. The windup and pitch. 
Fly ball to left field. Bob Kennedy slides over, turns, and makes the grab for the out. Side retired. One, two, three in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So that's the end of two innings of play with a score in the ball game. Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Now here's Finn. Well, Finn's time running out, of course, this being the last day of the season, and it's just about the last time to remind you about our Schaefer Lucky Strike Baseball Guide and Record Book. It will be our last offer, and we'll repeat it to you now. It can be picked up easily. Just send 50 cents, your name and address, to Baseball Guide, Box 35, Brooklyn 1, New York. 50 cents, your name and address, to Baseball Guide, Box 35, Brooklyn 1, New York. The end of two innings of play, Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Roger Craig and Seth Moorhead. Alan Roth, who was born in Canada, had never heard and wanted to know what the meaning of rushing the growler meant. Some of you folks who might not remember those days, that might be the man of the house wanted to have some cold beer with his dinner and send somebody down to the corner pub with a, oh, a small pail cup of some sort. And they'd fill it up with cold beer, and then that other person would bring it back home. Sometimes they used to even uh, kind of be shy about it. And I think uh, I know one or two old men used to put a, a little sheet over the over the little pail of beer and say it was a bird cage. All right, Jerry. <laughs> okay, Jim Gilliam at bat. Hits a pop foul off to the right, coming down, and right behind the Dodger dugout. Out of play, and it's strike one on Gilliam. <laughs> Gilliam batting in the third inning. Simoli is on deck and Perillo to follow. Junior hitting 249. Started out today at 250, but he popped out his first time up. Batting right against left-hander Seth Moorhead. Here's the windup, and down comes the pitch. Pop foul around the plate. Down the line comes Boucher at first base. Goes out across the foul line now and makes the grab for out number one. So Gilliam fouls out to Boucher down the first baseline. And Gino Simoli coming on. We'd like to remind you, friends, of Schaefer's special television show, World Series Sidelights, October 5th and 6th, next Saturday and Sunday. And it will be at 2.30. Vince Scully will be on hand to have some very fine baseball guests for you. World Series Sidelights brought to you by Schaefer next Saturday and Sunday at 2.30. Consult your newspaper TV section for the station. World Series Sidelights with Vince Scully brought to you by Schaefer. A lot of pitches inside to Simoli and the count goes ball two. Gino, two nothing. Singled his first time up. Went to third on a base hit and an error and scored on a fly ball by Hodges. Two nothing count. Moorhead into the windup. Gino hits a ground ball to third. Jones to his right. Makes a nice stop. Throw is in time for the out, and it's two away. Simoli grounding out, third to first. Here's Carl Ferrello coming on now. Carl singled to left field and on the base hit. Anderson bobbled in left to allow Ferrello to go to second. Carl hitting 309. Lifetime batting average at even 300 before this year. So Carl has since to keep that 300 average, and he might gain a point or two. Moorhead into the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing a high fly ball at the center field. Landrum slides over toward left center, makes the call, and has it for the out. Side retired. Brillo flying out to center. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So at the end of two and a half innings of play, it is Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Well, now, while the field changes hands, let's have a couple of young friends take the spotlight. How about it? For real, real enjoyment, Tell get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Mm. For real, real enjoyment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. For real, real refreshment, say it. Get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Yeah. For real, real refreshment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. That's a real trumpet. That's real beer. For real, real enjoyment, get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Mm. For real, real enjoyment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. 
Last half of the third, it'll be Joe Lonette, Seth Moorhead, and Richie Ashburn to face Roger Craig. The score in the ball game is one to nothing. The Dodgers out in front. Lonette hitting 165, five home runs, 15 runs batted in. And here's the windup by Craig. Pitch is fouled away right back to the wire. Strike one. Craig ready again. Checking his sign now. Delivers. A liner hit to right field is going to be in for a base hit. The ball goes by to the wall. Perillo plays the rebound. Lonette around on his way to second base and in with a stand-up double. Hit number one off Craig. A double to right field by Joe Lonette. And it brings on the pitcher, Seth Moorhead. Lonette slicing that drive to right field all the way to the wall. Pitcher Seth Moorhead due up now. Moorhead as a batter is 0 for 3 this year. Okay, Moorhead left hand hitter. Hodge is sneaking in at first looking for a bunt and the pitch is low outside ball one. Dodgers figure more had to be bunting the runner to third. Lonette on at second, leading off here in the third inning with a double to right. Ball one count on Moorhead. Ashburn on deck. Here's the look, the pitch. Moorhead takes it high for ball two. Count to nothing. Roger Craig working for the Dodgers here in this season finale. Two balls, no strikes. Moorhead, left-hand hitter. Here's the pitch. In for a strike, taking. And it's two and one. Moorhead just stood there, didn't uh, indicate that he was going to bunt or swing away, just let it come by. Two on pitch. Moorhead butts it up the first baseline. Hodges now will make the play, goes to the line and tags Moorhead as down to third goes Lonette. Sacrifice for Moorhead. Hodges unassisted. Coming on is Richie Ashburn. Ashburn grounded out the shortstop his first time up. The Dodger infield will play up now on the right side. Zimmer playing halfway back at shortstop. Jackson playing close to third. On the right side, Hodges and Gilliam up at the edge of the grass. So they'll try to hold Lana at third. Craig's pitch is outside, ball one. Outfield slightly to the left against Ashburn. They play him to punch instead of to pull. Wind up in the pitch. A drive hit the left field. Coming on for it is Kennedy. Runner tagged to third. Kennedy's throw is in and cut off as Lonette beats it back to third, holding up. Kennedy made a good throw in, and Jackson cut it off as Lonette bluffed coming in and then held up. So Ashburn lines to Kennedy in left field, and Bob's throw holds Lonette at third. Coming on now will be Don Landrum, who struck out his first time. Landrum now one for five in his big league debut. Hitting an even 200. Two outs, runner at third base. Landrum the batter. Lonette had to hold up. Kennedy made a good throw in and might have had him. Here's the pitch. Mud out in front of the plate. Craig comes down, makes his play in time for the outside retired. Landrum trying to bunt for the base hit and is thrown out by Roger Craig. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on. So that's the end of three innings of play with a score. Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Well, let's check now on the Schaefer scoreboard and see what's happening in all the other games on this final day of the 1957 season. Okay, Ben. Well, the Pirates and the Giants, it'll be Bob Friend and Johnny Antonelli. The ball game not as yet underway. Cincinnati and Milwaukee, Hook and Buell, no report there. 
Chicago and St. Louis, probable pitchers Rush and Barnes. In the American League, the Yankees and Red Sox, Dittmar and Bowman, at the end of one inning, no score. Cleveland, Chicago, no report yet. Daly and Latman. Baltimore and Washington, Johnson and Griggs had just got underway, and Baltimore did not score in the first inning. Kansas City and Detroit Hill against Roslyn, and no report. So our Schaefer scoreboard kind of quiet right now in the early part of the day. Not as soon as we have other scores, we'll pass them along to you. In our game, at the end of three, the Dodgers are run on two hits, and Philadelphia no runs on one hit and one error. It's Seth Moorhead and Roger Craig. Now as we get ready to go to the fourth inning, Gil Hodges will lead off, and let's get back to Jerry. Okay, Vinny, and a reminder again to the friends to be sure and mark their TV program schedules next Saturday and Sunday, October 5th and 6th. Circle 2.30, and be sure to tune in and see the Schaefer program, World Series High Sidelights with Vince Scully. Then we'll have some fine guests on hand, and we'll uh, talk some very inside baseball before the series games on Saturday and Sunday. Here's Gil Hodges at bat. Gil got a sacrifice fly his first time up, drove in the Dodger run. Looks at a curveball that's up high, and it's ball one. Ball one count on Hodges. Kennedy on deck and Jackson to follow. Moorhead delivers. Gill takes a strike, and the count is even at 1-1. Hodges now has 98 runs batted in and 27 homers, hitting 299. One ball, one strike to Gill. Moorhead into the windup, and here's his pitch. High and outside, ball two, two and one. One count. Moorhead delivers. Outside, ball three. Three and one now to Hodges. Brooklyn leads one to nothing. We're playing in the fourth inning. Three balls, one strike. The wind up, and here's the pitch. I just swings a drive down the left field line. It's going to be in there for a base hit in the corner all the way to the wall. Gill around, digs for second, and he's in there with a stand-up double. Hodges a line drive in the corner in left field for a two-bagger. That is hit number three off Seth Moorhead and gives the Dodgers a start here in the fourth inning with nobody out. Bob Kennedy coming on. Bob struck out his first time. Well, the base hit for Gill might put him at the 200, at the 300 mark. He's at 299, and Alan Ross says, yes, it does. So Hodge is right there with one for one today at 300. Here's the pitch. High pop fly around the mound. In comes Solly Hemus, and waits, makes the grab for the out. Kennedy out on a high pop fly just behind the mound, slightly to the second base side. Here's Randy Jackson due up now. Randy walked his first time. Hodges on second base, one out. Fourth inning, the Dodgers lead, one to nothing. Jackson, right-hand hitter. Moorhead delivers. The fastball is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes on Ransom Jackson. Now, again, Moorhead out of a stretch. Eyes Hodges at second base. Pitch to the plate. Pop foul coming back. This one's going to be out of play. Lonette followed the back a while, watched the sail to the roof. And back it comes onto the playing field. One ball, one strike on Jackson. Moorhead ready again. Hodges down off second. Here's the pitch. Jackson swings and pops it up into short center field. Solly Hemus going out makes the call. Now Landrum comes on and drives Hemus off and makes the catch. So Landrum dashing it from center field called Hemus off the ball after Solly had raised his hand indicating that he was there. 
So we have two outs now, and Don Zimmer coming on. Don went down swinging his first time up. On second base, Hodges led off the inning with a double to left. Now Moorhead ready. Here's the look in the pitch. Fastball, high outside, ball one. Don Zimmer waiting. Hodges off second. Brooklyn run came in the first inning, and that's all the scoring we've had. one nothing Dodgers lead. Curveball is in for a strike, and the count, 1-1. One, one. That would nick the outside corner around the knees. One ball, one strike to Don. Now again, Moorhead out of a stretch. Pitch. High pop fly off to the right of home plate foul. Line up now, going back for it. He's under it and makes the catch for the out. Zimmer fouls out to Lonette, off to the right of home plate. So the Dodgers out in the fourth with no runs. One hit, no errors, and had one man left on. So at the end of three and a half innings of play, it's Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Blow the whistle. Ring the bell. Now's the time to run like... Oh, get out. Did you say get out? Yes, I said get out and get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile, because Rose is offering some good deals on their current stock of 1957 cars before the new models come out in November. Learn why over 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. There's a reason. Rose Oldsmobile maintains in their modern service shop all the latest equipment and instruments for offering continuing warranty service on every Olds they sell. Yes, and you'll like the way they treat you at Rose Oldsmobile. Remember, Rose is offering some very fine deals on 1957 Oldsmobiles right now before the new models come out in November. So hurry on down, get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. That's Rose Oldsmobile, the Capital District's oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer over 30 years at Central and Manning. Get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. Get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. Get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. Rose, Rose, Oldsmobile. Rose Oldsmobile, Central and Manning in Albany. Last of the fourth inning, one nothing Brooklyn. Philly's coming up, right back to Jerry. Okay, Vinny, it'll be Ed Boucher who walked his first time. Boucher batting third, Anderson on deck, and Jones to follow. Roger Craig now checking signs with catcher Joe Pignatano. Boucher hitting 291, swings and fouls it off. Back upstairs, strike one. In case you joined us late, the Dodger run came in the first inning with one out. Simoli singled, Perillo singled, and when Anderson bobbled the ball in left field, both runners took an extra base, and then Hodges hit a scoring fly ball to center to score a uh, Simoli. Fastball is low, and the count to Boucher, one ball, one strike. Last half of the fourth inning. Roger Craig into the windup, and here's his pitch. In for a strike two, one and two. and two pitch. Craig into the windup. Here it is. Boucher swings and tops it. Fouls it off. Back of the plate. One and two. Roger into the windup and here it is. Curve is a little tight. Ball two and the count to two. Two pitch. Swung on and fouled off down the left field line. It'll be out of play. Bounces into the stands way down in the left field corner. And the count holds at 2 2 on Ed Boucher. Roger Craig checking his sign. Here's the windup, and down comes his pitch. Boucher takes it high for a ball, and the count full now 3 2. Two. Wind up and here's the pitch. Low for a ball and Boucher is on for the second time of the walk. Walk number two off Craig. 
batter now. Harry Anderson went down on strikes his first time up. Anderson left hand hitting left fielder hitting 269. Anderson swings from the left side. Boucher on with nobody out here in the fourth inning. Craig now eyes the runner. Here's the pitch. Anderson swings and pops it up off the third baseline foul. Pignatano giving it a try. He's over. He makes the catch for the out. Joe Pignatano racing over in front of the Philadelphia dugout on the left side. Hauled down that pop foul, and Anderson is out. One away. Batter now will be Willie Jones. Willie, first time, went down on strikes. So one out. One on, fourth inning, and at first base, Boucher. With the Dodger infield now against Jones, playing double play depth. And they played Jones to pull. Here's Craig's pitch. Ground ball to third. Jackson goes to second for one. The first base, easy double play to retire the side. That one going 5-4-3, and that's all for Philadelphia in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So the score at the end of four is Brooklyn one and Philadelphia nothing. Well, friends, we'd like to remind you once more of the fine program presented by Schaefer next Saturday and Sunday, October the 5th and 6th. World Series sidelines. Ben Scully will be on hand with some very interesting baseball guests and some fine baseball information for you. That's World Series Sidelights presented by Schaefer Beer next Saturday and Sunday, October 5th and 6th, before the World Series games from Milwaukee. And they'll be on at 2.30. Be sure and consult your TV listings for the station. World Series Sidelights brought to you by Schaefer next Saturday and Sunday. Well, friends, the first half of this game was brought to you by the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of Schaefer Beer, America's oldest lager beer. It's real beer. Now your host for the next five innings will be Lucky Strike, a light smoke, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. It's made by the American Tobacco Company, and tobacco is our middle name. Okay, we move along now to the top of the fifth inning of the ball game. And moving in for the play-by-play -play for Lucky Strike, here's Ben Scully. Ben? Thank you, Jerry. Hi, everybody. Joe Pignatano, first up there, and looks at a curveball in for the strike on one. Joe hit into a force play in the second inning, batting 250. one nothing Brooklyn, fifth inning, in the final game of the year. Seth Moorhead ready to deliver. Back he comes, and the slow curve is in and over. Strike two. Pignatano, Craig, and Gilliam, the way the Dodgers come up here in the fifth inning. The strike two pitch to Pignatano, curveball, foul tip of the plate. The count remains 0 2. Head back again with the own two pitch and a fastball is cut on the high fly ball into shallow right center. Don Landrum coming over and calling, waits and takes it. One up, one away. Yes, this is the day, this is the time of the year when the ball players, especially on the Brooklyn Club, are not so much asking who's going to pitch tomorrow, what kind of stuff does he have. Instead, the big question how do you get to the turnpike? How do you get south? How do you get north? Road maps all over the place instead of scouting reports. They're heading for the hills. Roger Craig batting 143. Hit into a fourth play in the second inning. 0 for 1. Moorhead delivers. Fastball that's fouled away. 0 and 1. Craig taking big swings up there. Head ready and the strike one pitch. Fastball a little high, one and one. One out, base is empty here in the fifth inning. One nothing Brooklyn. More head ready and delivers one one. And a high fastball. Craig tries to check his swing and can't do it. One and two. 
Lucky Strike blowing smoke rings to you on the final day of the year for 1957 from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia and as always wishing you the very best. One and two pitch, a fastball that got him looking so Craig gets to walk back to the dugout. Two down in the fifth inning, Jim Gilliam, the batter, popped up and fouled out. Carl Erskine was talking about how what a difference a few years makes. Carl being the player representative of the Brooklyn Ball Club had received a number of telegrams the last few days here at Philadelphia. He got one in particular that's kind of a story. Fastball to Gilliam in for a strike on one. Erskine was saying how he remembered in high school his baseball coach got him an autograph that he really prized. The telegram that he received just the other day in quest of World Series tickets was from the same ball player whose autograph Erskine got in his high school days. Bob Feller. Moore had double pumping on Gilliam. Now delivers and the fastball is taken for a strike. One and two. Jim popped up and fouled out at 249. Gilliam would hardly concur with Roy Campanella's description of 1957. Here's the one and two pitch to Junie. Curveball cut on it to right field, sinking now and drops in in front of Ashburn for the base hit. So Gilliam with a maybe a 250 batting average right now. All Campanella says when you ask him about this year, Roy just shakes his head and says, I think the whole year was a mistake. <laughs> well, I guess in Campanella's life, you, you start numbering years, 1955, 56, 58. And you forget all about 57. That's it, number four off Seth Moorhead. Gino Simoli has singled the right and bounced out. He's hitting 294. Hadn't been a mistake for Simoli, however. He's had a fine year. Ten home runs, 57 runs batted in. Moorhead delivers, and the curve is whacked to center. Landrum goes in, now has to go back a couple of steps and grabs it for the out. He's a very fast outfielder, and so quick that even though he might commit himself in the wrong direction, he can change and get back there in time, as he did on that play. Simoli lines out the center, and for Brooklyn, in the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, a man left on. No Philadelphia errors. And at the end of four and a half innings of play, Brooklyn won, Philadelphia nothing. All right, Jerry. Well, right at this moment, fans, got any idea how many smokers across the country are lighting up luckies? How many folks are settling back to enjoy a light smoke, a better tasting smoke? Well, I'd say countless thousands. Yes, sir, they know that fine tobacco alone tastes right. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. All fine tobacco. Naturally light, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Keep a carton of Lucky's handy. And when it's light-up time for you, light up a light smoke. Light up a Lucky, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoke. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Light up a light smoke, a Lucky Strike. Here we go to play, and for more action, here's Ben. Sally Hemus, the batter, here in the fifth inning, one nothing Brooklyn. Roger Craig delivers, and Sally swings and doesn't get it on one. Hemus popped out in the second inning. Sally hitting 189. Craig does wind up, and the strike one pitch, a fastball, it's in there again, strike two. Oh, and two. Craig to his windup and the strike two pitch. Nima swings and hits it off the end of the bat. Foul. Count remains. No balls. Two strikes. Rogers given up one hit. The double by Lynette to right field in the third inning. Now the strike two pitch. Cut on and hit just foul outside a third and down the line. Nima came close and he'll have to swing again. Hemus, Fernandez, and Lynette here in the fifth inning. 
Dodger run, the only run of the game thus far, came in the first inning on a couple of base hits. An error by Anderson set it up where Hodges scoring fly ball got it over. Strike two pitch is cut on a high fly ball into right center slightly. Simoli's right there waiting and takes it. One up, one away. Chico Fernandez flied to left field in the second inning, hitting 261. And while so many of the other ball players have just about wrapped up the equipment for this year, Chico, Sandy Amaros, Rene Valdez, and a few others, we're heading down to Cuba. And Fernandez sometimes moans about it a little. The curveball is cut on and fouled by going one. Chico. It was not a big fella anyway, and after playing all year for Philadelphia, he weighed about 156 pounds, I guess. And now he'll have to start that season down there in Cuba. The strike one pitch. Fernandez swings and lines it into left center. That'll be a base hit. Simoli on to play it on a bounce and get it back in. So with one out in the fifth inning, Fernandez singles. The second hit off Roger Craig. And let's identify ourselves. Cause the station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station with downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. It's 21 minutes before 3 o'clock. All right, Chico Fernandez at first base, one out, and Joe Lynette the batter and takes a pitch down low, ball one. One nothing Brooklyn, last of the fifth inning. Craig straddling the rubber while he looks in to get his sign. Pignatano wigwags it out to him. Check of first and a lob throw over there. Hodges returns it to the mound. One and all. Now the pitch to Lonette, taken for the strike. One and one. Staring in, now he's ready. Fernandez inching off the bag at first, and the pitch to Lonette. In and over for the second strike. One and two. Craig ready, looks over at Fernandez. Now the one and two pitch. Lonette swings and misses. Strike three. Craig now has four strikeouts. Two down in the fifth inning, and the batter, Seth Moorhead. The Dodger pitching staff will miss a record. Most strikeouts by a pitching staff in the major leagues. And they won't miss it by too much. They needed 12 strikeouts today to tie the record. The pitch to Seth Moorhead is cut on and fouled back on one. And actually, the fellows who have really chalked up the strikeouts were not considered to work today. Sandy Colfax, who has a great strikeout mark. Don Drysdale bothers a lot of right-hand batters. Strike one pitch, taken high and away, one and one. And Craig has four in four and two-third innings. one nothing Brooklyn, bottom of the fifth. Moorhead bounced out in the third. Craig delivers 1-1, one, one, and Moorhead takes outside, ball two, two and one. Seth Moorhead. Remember the play that was on Broadway, Plain and Fancy, about the Amish people here in Pennsylvania? Sounds like a name that, oh, let's say the town elder would have. I'm going to go down and see Seth Moorhead and get some advice. 2-1 pitch, and the pitcher cuts on it and pops it up. Zimmer going out on the grass. Falling all the way now and takes it for the out. In the fifth inning for Philadelphia, no runs, one hit, a man left on. And the score at the end of five innings of play. Brooklyn one, Philadelphia nothing. Blow the whistle. Ring the bell. 
Now's the time to run like... Oh, get out. Did you say get out? Yes, I said get out and get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile, because Rose is offering some good deals on their current stock of 1957 cars before the new models come out in November. Learn why over 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. There's a reason. Rose Oldsmobile maintains in their modern service shop all the latest equipment and instruments for offering continuing warranty service on every Olds they sell. Yes, and you'll like the way they treat you at Rose Oldsmobile. Remember, Rose is offering some very fine deals on 1950. Fifty-seven Oldsmobiles right now before the new models come out in November. So hurry on down, get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. That's Rose Oldsmobile, the Capital District's oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer, over 30 years at Central and Manning. Get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile, get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile, get Rose's deal on Oldsmobile. Rose Oldsmobile, Central and Manning in Albany. Top of the sixth inning, Carl Ferrillo coming off for the Dodgers, and for lucky strike and more play-by-play, here's Vin. Ferrillo is one for two. He singled to left and flied to center, batting 308. Moorhead looks in to get his sign. Carl waiting. Now the left hand ready and delivers, and Ferrillo fouls it back out of play on one. I don't know if you feel the same way about it, but on this final day of 1957, we're in the sixth inning. And the ball game has taken an hour and 15 minutes up to here, and you get the feeling, since it is the last one, wish the boys would slow down a little bit. Curve it long inside, one and one. Won't be seeing baseball now during the cold winter months. Take it easy down there, fellas. Let's, uh, let's not just slam the lid on it. Moorhead ready, and the 1-1 pitch. Frillo swings and foul tips it, one and two. You know, the end of the summer and the beginning of the fall and realizing that all these fellas whom you've been with since, well, some of us have been with them since February. And now they'll be scattered all over the country. Kind of a sad day. Moorhead delivers one and two and Frillo swings and fouls it away. One ball, two strikes. Some of the wonderful stories you find out occurred during the course of a ball game, and then you find out either after the game or the next day. And we found out one that might give you a kick about yesterday's game. And these games, of course, right at the final part of the year, no particular importance in the league standing. One and two pitch, Frillo swings and misses, strike three, one out. But the story about yesterday's ball game concerned Eddie Roebuck, who pitched four innings in relief, and walked a run over with the bases loaded in the ninth inning. Padres had to come and get him and strike out Anderson to end the game. And we were talking to Roebuck, and uh, Eddie brought it up. And he said, you know what I was thinking about out there in the mound, pitching the last couple of innings in relief yesterday, realizing the ball game is not really of great importance. Gil Hodges up there and takes a strike. Roebuck said that when he came out to the mound, he kept saying to himself, now, make believe this is the final game of the World Series. He said, the score is tied, and keep that in your mind. And all the time while he was pitching in relief yesterday, he was making believe he was in the World Series. Pitched to Hodges up high, one and one. And finally, he got into the ninth inning, and with two out, he had the bases loaded. And then he said, right then, he backed off the rubber, and he said to himself, all right, now you're, let's say you're at Yankee Stadium, there are 80,000 people there, and the reporters from all over the country, the television and radio networks are watching your every move. And Roebuck said he went to a 3-2 count on Don Landrum with the bases loaded and two out yesterday and walked him, walked in the run. And then he said, you know what I found out about myself? Here's the one one pitch to Hodges in the dirt, ball two. And he said, here I was, I'd done such a tremendous job of convincing myself I was pitching in the final game in the last inning of the World Series. And he said, I walked Landrum on a 3-2 pitch to force in the run. He said, I found I was scared stiff. I'd talked myself right out of this game. He said he had to come out and Padres took over. The 2-1 pitch. Hodges swings, takes a half swing, and it's as slowly to short. Fernandez hurries his play and gets his man. Two down. So you wonder, on the final day of the year, when the game team-wise isn't too important, the Phillies would like to end up at the 500 mark. A couple of individuals have certain records that they're trying to shoot at. You just wonder... 
if some of the other fellows down there in the field right now aren't using their imaginations and making believe it's a real big one. Bob Kennedy swings at a fist and doesn't get it on one. And you know, Kennedy might very well be saying it's a big one. Bob has let it be known that he plans to call it a baseball career after today. So this will be Kennedy's final game. The hot one down the third. It runs up Jones's arm. Well, he picks it up and fires to first just in time for the out. The Dodgers out in order in the sixth inning. At the end of five and a half innings of play in a fine ball game, Brooklyn one run on four hits and no errors. Philadelphia no runs on two hits and one error. Now here's Jerry. Well, you know, it's not very often that philosophy and baseball go together, but Mr. Gil Hodges has managed to combine the two. Okay, Gil. Those bench jockeys, they can sit there all day long making one wise crack after another and really have themselves at ball. Me, I'll just leave it to the other guys and take my fun after the game. That means grabbing a shower and sitting around with a lucky. They're all cigarette, all tobacco, all the way through. I'd say luckies are the best tasting cigarette I ever smoked. Yes, there, Gil. Smokers everywhere find that Lucky's taste better, and for good reason. Fine tobacco alone tastes right, and Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. So do as Gil says and light up a light smoke. Light up a Lucky. You say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Well, a real good one going here. Last half of the sixth inning, Ashburn, Landrum, and Boucher coming on. So let's go right back to Vin for more action. Well, Richie Ashburn is 0 for 2, bounced out and flied out, batting 296. Bottom of the sixth, one nothing Brooklyn. The Dodgers are not completely on strange soil in the final day of the year. We have about, well, 15 or 20 folks who have come down from Brooklyn to see this game. In fact, one gal is going to go home with a little souvenir. Craig Reddy and delivers, and Ashburn takes a strike, going one. Some of the gals, teenagers, and they wanted to get the various autographs of all the players. One gal really did it. Here's the strike one pitch to Ashburn. Cut on and hit down the left field line, just fair, bouncing into the corner. And by the time Bob Kennedy plays the carom, Ashburn has a stand-up double. Well, the Dodgers leading 1-0 in the sixth inning, and Ashburn opens up with a double. That is hit number three off Roger Craig. <laughs> you know the old expression, if uh, somebody shakes hands with a well-known person and you, oh, I won't wash my hand for a week. Well, this gal got the autograph, apparently, of her favorite Dodger on the back of her left hand. <laughs> in ink. Yes. Don Landrum, the batter, and takes a fastball up high. Ball one. Landrum batting 167. She's been wearing gloves ever since, too, so that uh, not too many people notice her. The 1 0 pitch. Landrum swings and doesn't get it. 1 1. The Dodgers are run on four hits. Philadelphia no runs on three hits. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Roger Craig and Seth Moorhead battling it out, and the Phillies trying to get even here in the sixth. Craig looks to Ashburn, now delivers, and the slow curve is down low. Ball two. Two and one. Jackson ups inside the bag at third. Ashburn a short lead right now, ready to come down some more. Craig delivers, there goes Ashburn, and the pitch is hit slowly up to first. Hodges one-hands it and feeds to Craig, who immediately steps on the bag and whirls ready to fire, but Ashburn holds on at third. So Landrum bounces out. Ashburn going on the pitch goes to third. Ed Boucher coming up. Boucher has walked twice, though he has not been up officially. Ed hitting 291, left-hand batter, and the Dodger infield plays up. The outfield deep and around the right, a big gap in left center. Craig looks over at Ashburn, and now with one out, winds and delivers, and the slow curve is high, ball one. 
Tony Venzen, the plate umpire, Bill Joukowsky at first, Chad Crawford at second, and Bill Baker on the line at third. Gray goes to the rosin bag, gives it a pinch. Both bullpens quiet. Roger to his windup and the 1-0 pitch. Boucher swings and belts one high and deep to right field. That baby is out of here. Boucher hits his 17th home run with a man aboard. He has 76 runs batted in. The Phillies take the lead 2-1, and the batter, Harry Anderson, who is 0 for 2. Craig delivers, and the pitch is cut on a high foul down the left field line. Zimmer, Jackson, and Kennedy coming over, but it falls in amongst them out of play. 0-1. This year, Ed Boucher and Harry Anderson have both tied a Philadelphia club mark most home runs hit by a freshman. Del Ennis in his first year with Philadelphia hit 17. Now Boucher and Anderson is up at the plate. Of each hit have 17. In the Dodger bullpen, Sandy Koufax goes to work. Phillies 2, Brooklyn 1, bottom of the sixth. Anderson swings and hooks it foul down the line, back into the seats. Harry chipped his bat, so he'll have to get a new one. That stung. He's looking at that left hand as if he had burned a hole in it. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Well, Ashburn double. Landrum advanced him to third, and Boucher hit one out. And the Phillies, who had been shut out for five innings, now lead 2 to 1. On the home run, we gladly send along a thousand free luckies to the Veterans Hospital at Kingsbridge Road in the Bronx. Craig delivers 0 oh, and 2, and Anderson takes high, ball 1. Roger to his windup, and the one and two pitch to Harry Anderson is cut on and popped up. Jim Gilliam calls, but Hodges looks at him. Gilliam keeps coming on and calling, and Jim will make the play. So Anderson pops up to Gilliam, two down in the sixth inning, and the batter, Willie Jones, who is struck out and bounced into a double play. Willie batting 218. takes the first pitch and it misses ball one. One and oh. Jones bounces one down to third. Jackson up with the ball. Straightens up now and flips the first for the out. Play going five to three. So in the sixth inning, the Phillies come up with a double and a home run by Ed Boucher. Two runs on two hits. Nobody left on, no Dodger errors. And at the end of six innings of play, Philadelphia two runs, four hits, and one error. The Dodgers one run, four hits, and no errors. Before we get to the seventh inning, there are other ball games perking along, so let's take a look at our lucky strike scoreboard. Here's Jerry. Okay, Benny, in the ball game at New York, the Pittsburgh Pirates lead the Giants by a score of four to one at the end of two and a half innings of play. For Pittsburgh, Bob Friend, 13 and 18. For the Giants, Antonelli started, relieved by Barclay in the third. Frank Thomas, a home run in the second inning with none on his 23rd of the year. Cincinnati will play at Milwaukee. It'll be Hook, 0-1 for the Redlegs, and Buell, 18-7, going for Milwaukee. Chicago at St. Louis, the ball game underway. It's Grabowski, 12-15 against Barnes, 0-0, and no score at the end of one inning of play. In the American League, the Red Sox lead the Yankees 1-0 at the end of four at Boston. Dittmar replaced by Cooks in the fifth inning. Bauman going for the Red Sox. Chicago leads Cleveland 1-0 at the end of one inning of play. Lapman for Chicago. Daly for Cleveland. No score. Baltimore, Washington in the three of the half. Detroit leads Kansas City 2-0 at the end of one. Okay, let's go right back to action. Here's Vin. 
Randy Jackson up there and starts off with a strike against him as Seth Moorhead gets his curve over. Jackson has walked and fly to center. 0 for 1. Randy batting 200. 2-1 Philadelphia. Seventh inning. A fastball is cut on and missed. 0 and 2. So the Dodgers and the Phillies close out the year as they opened it up here at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. The 0-2 pitch to Jackson. Fastball cut on is a high pop fly. Salihim is backing out. Turns now as Ashburn has a better shot at it and Richie comes on to grab it. One out. Way back on the 16th of April, the Dodgers and the Phillies opened up this 1957 season here at Connie Mack Stadium at night. Don Newcomb started against Robin Roberts. The Dodgers won it. 7-6. to six. Boy, a lot of things have happened since that night, huh? Zimmer swings at a pitch and fouls it away. 0-1. Right into the mask of Joe Lynette. Zimmer struck out and fouled out. 0 for 2, batting 220. Zimmer started off the year in fine style. His first at-bat in 1957 here at County Mack Stadium was a home run. Swings and it's a high foul or first base. That'll go out of play on top of the roof. 0-2. In fact, Zimmer was going very well at the outset. And then he got hurt. And then he really slowed down. Could never regain that early season form. The strike two pitch. Zimmer reaches for it and taps it back to the mound. Be an easy play for Moorhead and a flip over to Ed Boucher. Two out. Dodgers won their first three games of the year. Beat Philadelphia and knocked off the Pirates twice. And looked like it was going to be quite a beginning. But then there are a lot of mountains to climb and the ball club couldn't quite do it all year long. Joe Pignatano checks his swing and fouls it in the upper deck. And then it comes cascading down below. 0 and 1. Pignatano hitting 231, hit into a fourth play and fly to center. Seth Moorhead winds and delivers. Curveball missing high and away. 1 and 1. Lucky strike sending it all to you as they have been doing all year long. And today, our last stop, Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. delivers 1-1 one, one. the fastball is cut on and fouled back in the upper deck and again comes dribbling down onto the field so folks in the stands have had two chances and they're still empty handed one and two Moorhead delivers and his curveball is hit slowly wide a third Jones cuts in front of Fernandez and throws in the dirt and Boucher digs it out so Pignatano bounces out third to first. The Dodgers in the seventh inning out in order one, two, three. And at the end of six and a half innings of play, Philadelphia two and Brooklyn one. Now here's Jerry. Well, lucky seven. Time for all the hometown fans to stand up and be counted. And that's what they're doing right here at Philadelphia. Guess we'll do likewise. Kind of stretch way out. Feels good, you know, to get that seventh inning stretch. Now the lucky. Ah, fresh pack. Nothing like it. Lucky seven and a lucky strike. A light smoke. Yes, sir, this one is all cigarette. All fine tobacco. Lucky strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco alone tastes right. Mm-mm. Oh, that's great. That's why they say lucky tastes better. Yep. Friends, light up a light smoke. Light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Well, the Philly fans there standing up for their last look at the 1957 ball club. The Dodgers and the Phillies putting on a good show today. Two to one score. Philadelphia leads. Last half of the seventh inning. Hemus, Fernandez, and Lamette do up to face Roger Craig. So for more action, here's Vin. 
Charlie Hemus has popped out and flied to center. He's over two, hitting 187. Sandy Koufax throwing back of Craig in the Dodger bullpen. Hemus takes a slow curve in for a strike on one. As soon as we have a disposition of Sally, we'll duck in a station break. 2-1 Philadelphia, last of the seventh inning. The strike one pitch, a little high and inside, one and one. Craig do his windup. Now the one-one pitch. Slow curve, trying to change it in there and miss. Ball two, two and one. Roger Craig is due to be first batter up for Brooklyn in the eighth inning. The 2-1 pitch on its way, and it's over. Strike two. Hemus, Fernandez, and Lynette. Did anybody get on? Maybe we'll see Seth Moorhead. The 2-2 pitch to Hemus. Cut on is a high drive to right field, but it's playable. Frillo backs up on the gravel now, about 10 feet in front of the fence, and makes a play. One up, one away, and let's pause right now for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station, with downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. Two minutes after 3 o'clock. Fernandez, one for two, the batter, and looks at a slow curve over for the strike. Chico batting 263, slide to left and single to center. Craig back with a pitch and misses high, one and one. Well, this might very well be the last inning of work for Roger Craig this year. The 1-1 pitch, cut on is a high fly ball into shallow right center. Perillo and Simoli coming over. Perillo calling, makes the play. Two out. One thing about 1957, sometimes you can try to be nice and cause a little trouble and seeing Joe Pignatano working back of the plate brings to mind early this year when Pignatano made his debut in a major league ball game. He's a Brooklyn boy. First time he got into a ball game against the Chicago Cubs in a night game at Ebbets Field. Joe Lonette fouls a pitch away, 0-1. And so that night when Pignatano got in a ball game, and we figured you would be a nice thrill for Mrs. Pignatano to see a husband play. Remember, we were on television at the time. Lonette hits another one down the line. That's going foul, 0-2. So just trying to be nice, you know, and you say, uh, listen, friends, if you know Mrs. Pignatano's number, why not give her a call? She might not know that Joe's playing. Uh-huh. We're late in the game. She got 18 phone calls in a row, just uh, one right after the other. And she spent all the time on the phone saying, yes, I know Joe's playing. Thank you very much. Yes, I know he's playing. Yeah, thank you. It's very thoughtful. And meanwhile, she never saw him play. So <laughs> that's the last time we're going to do something like that. One and two pitch on that is cut on as a high drive down the left field line, starting to hook a bit and go foul. Not by too much. Bob Kennedy went over into the Philadelphia bullpen, but had no play. I guess uh, that would be 1957 sometimes. A lot of things the ball club tried to do just didn't turn out exactly right. The one and two pitch, Lonnet shies away. It's inside, two and two. Two out, seventh inning. Phillies two, Brooklyn one. Craig to his wind up and delivers to Lonette. Joe Swing, another high foul down the left field line. Kennedy coming over into the bullpen and can't make it. It's back into the stands. Count holds two and two. Craig and the Dodgers led one nothing into the sixth inning. But with one out in Ashburn at third, Ed Boucher hit a home run. And that's it up to here. Two to one, Philadelphia. Roger, two is wind up, and the 2-2 pitch. Lonette takes low, ball three. Craig delivers 3-2. Lonette takes in the dirt, ball four. Oh, with two out, Joe Lonette draws a walk, and that'll bring up pitcher Seth Moorhead. Seth has bounced out and popped up. He is 0 for 2, 0 for 4 this year. And getting a well-deserved round of applause. He allowed the Dodgers one run in the first inning, and since then, since the first inning, he's allowed just two hits. 
Craig takes a look. Lynette goes. The pitch is cut on and grounded down to Gilliam, who's up with it easily and makes his play. So Moorhead retired four to three. For Philadelphia in the seventh inning, no runs, no hit. They leave one man at the end of seven innings of play. Philadelphia two and Brooklyn one. Once again, a few words from Jerry. Just a reminder once more, friends, your last chance to get your Dodger yearbook for 1957. A yearbook that is full of uh, pictures of all the players, the records of all the players, and some interesting information about the Dodgers and a fine baseball souvenir of the 1957 season. Send 50 cents your name and address to Dodger Yearbook, Box 119, Brooklyn 1, New York. That's Dodger Yearbook, Box 119, Brooklyn 1, New York. Send along 50 cents your name and address, and you'll get your copy of the Dodger Yearbook for 1957. You know you'll want to have one for the winner and a souvenir of the 1957 team. So send off right away and get your Dodger Yearbook, Box 119, Brooklyn 1, New York. Well, we move along to the eighth inning now. Roger Craig due up. Roy Campanella will come on to bat for him, followed by Gilliam and then by Simoli. So let's go right back to Vin for more action. Well, the attendance today paid 9,886. Philadelphia's had a good year, box office-wise. They drew 1,146,000, which is an increase of 211,000 votes over last year. Of course, when you start talking about attendance, everybody naturally has to point to Milwaukee. The Braves established a new National League attendance mark. Last we looked, I think it was 2,170,000 or thereabouts. And the final game they play up there. Campanelli hits a high fly ball into left center. Landrum calling all the way and makes his play. So Campy, who originates from these parts, and considering his personality, he comes from an aptly named section of Philadelphia, Nice Town. So the nice man from Nice Town flies out. One out in the eighth inning, two to one in favor of the Phillies. And the batter, Jim Gilliam, popped up, fouled out, and singled, hitting 250. Junior checks his swing, and the breaking ball is low and inside, ball one. Jackie Collum has stopped throwing, and Koufax is up again. There's a hot one up the middle, deflected by Moorhead, a bare hand grab by Fernandez, and he makes the play. A beauty. Well, now, I tell you what, on a pool shot like that, three cushion play. Wagon one deflected by pitcher Moorhead, hit towards the hole, and a bare hand grab by Fernandez to get Gilliam. One to six to three. We'll pin 5,000 free luckies on that one. Send them with our best wishes to the Veterans Hospital at Kingsbridge Road in the Bronx. Two down in the eighth inning. Gino Simoli is one for three, hitting 294. Moorhead ready, bends a curve, and it's hit on a bounce and dug out by Willie Jones, who makes his play to Boucher. So a couple of fine defensive plays by Fernandez and Willie Jones. Simoli out third to first. The end of seven and a half innings of play. Philadelphia, two runs, four hits, and one error. And the Dodgers, one run, four hits, and no errors. Now let's listen to Jerry. Okay, Vinny, in about two shakes, Happy Joe Lucky will send some mighty intriguing clubhouse chatter your way. Meantime, light up a light smoke. Light up a Lucky. Why a Lucky? Because fine tobacco alone tastes right. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco all the way through from end to end. A Lucky's all fine tobacco. Fine, light, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Yes, a Lucky's a light smoke. And the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Well, a little of that clubhouse chatter now as we're at the final innings of the final game of the season. We're telling you from time to time about some of the occupations of the Dodger athletes during the wintertime. Duke Snyder's going to head for California and work on his avocado ramp. Rube Walker's going to play golf and sell cars. Randy Jackson, busy in Athens, Georgia, selling insurance. Clem LeBion, a garment designer, will take uh, up that occupation as soon as he has a couple of weeks of vacation playing golf. Carl Erskine's going out to northern Wisconsin to go hunting and fishing. Johnny Padres plans a fishing trip to Canada. Gino Simoli goes to Los Angeles for an appearance on the Red Skelton Show. Don Newcomb out to play golf in New Jersey. And Charlie Neal down to Texas to go hunting for a while. 
Some of the boys are going to play winter ball. Sandy Amaros in Cuba. Pignatano in the Dominican. Roseboro in Caracas, Venezuela. Danny McDevitt in Cuba. Harris will play in Venezuela, as will Valdez play in Cuba. Joe Becker, the pitching coach, he's going to be busy all winter long training mules. That's our clubhouse chatter, and thanks to Happy Joe Lucky. Now let's go back to play, and here's Vin. Richie Ashburn, Don Landrum, and Ed Boucher in the bottom of the eighth, 2-1 Philadelphia, and Sandy Colfax taking over after Roger Craig pitched seven innings. Gave up two runs and four hits. Colfax delivers, and the fastball Ashburn is in for a strike. Thinking about Joe Becker training mules, you know, that old mule skinner story about a fellow who brought his mule to a trainer to have him trained. I guess Becker would know it. The strike one pitch to Ashburn is a curve in there. 0 and 2. Fella brought his mule to the trainer, and the trainer said, Fine, I'll train him. And the first thing he did is pick up a 2 by 4 and hit the mule right between the eyes. And the owner said, What's the matter with you? You lose your mind or something? What are you hitting the mule for? And the fellow said, oh, I didn't hit him. I'm just trying to get his attention. <laughs> so I imagine it could be tough. The 0 and 2 pitch to Ashburn is a fastball filed away. Listening up in the Philadelphia bullpen, the familiar number 36, Robin Roberts. <laughs> On two to Ashburn, hitting 299. He's a big at bat for Richie, and it's a comeback into the mound. Koufax handles it, flips to first, and that does it for Ashburn. Now, let's see when was the last time Ashburn failed to hit 300. It's been a few years. One out in the eighth inning, 2-1 Philadelphia, and the batter, Don Landrum. He is 0 for 3, batting 143. Time running out on 1957. Landrum moves away from an inside fastball, ball one. So Ashburn ends the year under 300 for the first time since 1952. And that's a note. Colfax winds and the 1-0 pitch is fastball high. Ball two, two and oh. When the Dodgers come to bat for perhaps the last windup of 1957, Perillo, Hodges, and Kennedy. Should anybody get on, maybe Jackson. The 2-0 and oh pitch in there for the strike. Two and one. So Colfax will be going into the service has a chance to fire a baseball, a fastball for the last time for a while. The 2-1 pitch is the fastball, and he missed. Ball three, three and one. On deck, the villain of the piece, as far as Brooklyn is concerned, and the hero thus far for Philadelphia, Boucher. His home run in the sixth inning with a man aboard is the difference. Phillies two, Brooklyn one, eighth inning. The 3-1 pitch, and the slow pitch is up high, ball four. So Landrum draws a walk. One out in the eighth inning, and here's Ed Boucher. Ed's had quite a year. 17 home runs, 76 runs batted in, hitting 293. Koufax looks over at first, now delivers, and the fastball is low and inside. Ball one. Phillies were helped considerably by the young ball players this year. Ed Boucher, Harry Anderson, Bob Bowman, and the pitchers, Jack Sanford, Cardwell, Farrell, helped them along. The 1 0 pitch. Down low ball, too, 2 and 0. The Phillies had two breaks against them with the plus sides of the young fellas coming through. Lopata being injured and almost useless for most of the year. And Jones' inability to hit. 2-0 pitch to Boucher is inside, ball three. Granny Hanner, who started off and was one of the prime reasons for keeping the Phillies in the pennant race, Hanner's average tailed off. And then to close out a bitter year for him after such a promising start, he got hurt the other night and had to leave. 
Curve ball to Boucher is low. Ball four. And so the Phillies, with one out in the eighth inning, have runners at first and second on walks to Landrum and Boucher. Harry Anderson has struck out, fouled out, and popped up. Harry hitting 267. Colfanks in a jam now. Runners at first and second. One out. Phillies two. Brooklyn one. Bottom of the eighth. Anderson waiting. Colfax bends a curve and misses outside. Ball one. In the Dodger bullpen, Don Besson joins Jackie Collum. On this final day of the year, we'll run down the pitching records of all the boys. And then when the Dodgers hit in the ninth, we'll tell you their batting averages. More or less close up shop. The 1-0 pitch, Anderson swings and misses, 1-1. Billy Harris, 0-1. Don Besson, 1-3. Roger Craig, 6-8 prior to today. Don Drysdale, the club's big winner, 17-9. Carl Erskine, 5-3. Sandy Koufax, 5-4. Clem Levine, 5-7. Danny McDevitt, 7-4. The 1-1 pitch, in there for the second strike. Don Newcomb, 11 and 12. Johnny Padres, 12 and 9. Ed Roebuck, 8 and 2. Rene Valdez, 1 and 1. So that's how the pitching went. They had a footnote to the Dodger pitching prowess this year. It was quite a staff. Anderson waiting. Koufax delivers one and two. Harry swings and fouls it back. The National League earned run average leaders. Johnny Padres, as we check Alan Ross figures, they are not official yet. They do not get league sanctioned, but you can just about bet on them. Padres will win the title, followed by Don Drysdale, the third man in the league. He'll tie Drysdale, will be Warren Spahn. But Padres, unofficially, has won the ERA title. The only Dodger pitcher since Bazzy Vance. The one and two pitch is way up high. Pignatano leaps in the air to grab it. Two and two. The Dodger pitching staff turned in 18 shutouts this year. Padres had six, Drysdale four, Newcomb four, McDevitt two, Magley one, and Magley and Labine time combined for a shutout. The 2-2 pitch is low, ball three. So Sandy Koufax has gone to a full count to Harry Anderson. Don Landrum at second, Ed Boucher at first. One out in the eighth inning, two to one in favor of the Phillies. Max set, checks his men. The 3-2 pitch. Fastball, golfed at, and a big high bouncer. Gilliam has to short hop it. His play to Hodges in time, and everybody else moves up 90 feet. That was a very tough play for Gilliam for two counts. One as Boucher went by, almost shielded the ball from Gilliam's vision. And the other, since it was a big high bouncer and a left-hand batter going down the line, Gilliam had to short hop it. He made the play. Okay, two out, runners at second and third, and Willie Jones the batter. Willie has struck out, hit into a double play, and bounced out, batting 217. Colfax to his windup and delivers, and Jones takes a curveball in for a strike. If you're wondering about the Dodger bullpen this year, we can tell you about the men who saved games. In other words, coming on when the Dodgers led, not getting credited with a victory, but at the same time holding the opponent quiet. And the Dodgers could hold on to their lead. That's a big department when you talk about relief pitchers. The strike one pitch to Jones, a fastball foul back, 0 2. Clem Levine saved 17 in relief. Eddie Roebuck, who won eight, also saved eight. Johnny Padres saved three as a starting pitcher, 3 1 12. 
And Sal Magley saved one in relief. So that's just about the story on pitching this year. And the pitching on the Brooklyn Ball Club is certainly the big beacon light of the future. It's quite a staff. Colfax getting his sign. 0-2, the count to Willie Jones. Sandy looks over third at Landrum. Now goes to his windup. The strike two pitch. Fastball got him swinging. So Colfax strikes out Willie Jones and for Philadelphia in the eighth inning. And it's an odd thing. Colfax faced five men in the inning. He walked two. And two other men made out. And the first four men who hit the ball fairly well and two of them got on base were all left-handers. And the one right-hander, if you're playing percentage-wise, who should be able to give Colfax trouble, he strikes him out. The end of eight, Philadelphia two and Brooklyn one. And before we get to the ninth inning, what might be the final half inning of 1957, let's have a few words from Jerry. Well, plan better taste than a lucky doesn't just happen. No, sir, it's planned that way. You see, fine tobacco alone tastes right, and lucky strike means fine tobacco. All fine tobacco. Naturally light tobacco to give you a light smoke. Naturally good tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. See, it doesn't just happen. It's all part of a plan well calculated to bring you the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. And right now it's just about 326 here in Philadelphia. Make it light up time. Light up a light smoke. Light up a lucky. Good idea? Great idea. And we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station, with downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. Now back to play, and here's Vin. Paul Perlo swings on the first pitch, and it's a high foul. Back of the plate. Joe Lynette comes over and grabs it. One out. Paul Frillo wound up the 1957 season. We say that, unless the Dodgers should tie it and perhaps it's going to extra innings. We told you about the pitchers who will try and get the hitters in here. So Frillo ended up hitting 306. Gil Hodges coming up and the entire ball club rooting for Gil as of this moment. He had a scoring fly ball in the first inning, doubled and bounced out. Hodges is batting 299. He has to have a base hit now to hit 300 for the year. Swings and fouls it back on one. Another note about this ball game, the Dodgers have not lost to a left-hander this year. Six and O. Oh. And Seth Moorhead has him down two to one with one out in the ninth. So Hodges batting 299. Moorhead delivers and the pitch is in there, so Gill's in a hole. The count, no balls and two strikes. So this could very well be the last time this year that we'll be doing any play-by-play -play for you. It's been a good year. Maybe not a great one for the ball club, but there's been a lot of thrills and excitement and a few laughs and just about everything you'd want out of a year. Curve in the dirt, one and two. Sure like to thank all you folks for your patience when we boot them and for your kind letters as well. One out in the ninth inning, 2-1 Philadelphia. The end of 57. Hodges swings a fly ball to left field, and friends, he's not going to get it. Anderson is right there to take it. So Hodges does not get the base hit. And Gill ends the season batting 2-99. That's too bad. All right, two out. And perhaps the last man to come up for Brooklyn this year, Bob Kennedy. And this for Bob will be his last at bat in the major league. At least so he has announced. He plans to retire at the end of this year. Curveball to Kennedy in for a strike on one. Another note on Kennedy. Back in 1939 when he broke into the major leagues, he played his first major league game right here at Connie Mack Stadium. So that his baseball career has just about made the complete circle, wouldn't you say? Kennedy swings and fouls it back, going two. He starts and ends it. That's Philadelphia. Started in 39 and closing it out in 57. So the 
Dodgers with one strike left to them. Trail two to one in the ninth inning in the closing game. The strike two pitch is cut on and fouled back. 0 and 2. On deck, Randy Jackson. Tell you about the Dodger batters. Let's see. Gilliam hit 250. Simoli 293. Perillo 306. Hodges 299. Kennedy 133. Jackson 198. Zimmer 219. Pignatano 214. Third ball is cut on a fly ball to center. Don Landrum is waiting. Under it. He's got it. And 1957 goes down the drain. And with it, the final game of the year, the Phillies winning it 2-1. to one. And Bob Kennedy flies out to center field, and that does it. Well, that'll do it from this end as far as the play-by-play is concerned. Philadelphia 2 and Brooklyn 1. And 1957 is in the books. Again, many, many thanks to all of you. It's a great association. We always hate to see the end of the year. And this one closes out. September 29th, 1957. And now for the last time this year, we will say that's the ball game, friends. The final score, Philadelphia 2 and Brooklyn 1. And we'll be back with the final recap of the game in just a moment. Light up the light smoke, a lucky strike. The right smoke, the light smoke, a lucky strike. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Light up a light smoke, a lucky strike. Well, here at Connie Mack Stadium, the scene of so many exciting games this year, the Dodgers and the Phillies pulled down the curtain. The Phillies won it 2-1. to one. Just as a... Uh, Put note to the end of it, again, passing along our own personal thanks and also those, I'm sure, of the Arsenal helper. Jerry Doggett's right here, so he can say his own. I'll tell you what, Jerry, on the final day, first things first, supposing uh, you give the totals and the winning and losing pitchers before we uh, kind of take a low bow from the waist and drop our caps for the final time. All right, Billy, the totals for the Phillies, two runs, four hits, one error, six men left on. For the Dodgers, one run, four hits, no errors, and four left on. The winning pitcher, Seth Moorhead, his first major league start, his first major league win, he has lost one time. Craig was the loser, his record now, 6-9 and nine on the year. And for the Brooklyn Dodgers for the season of 1957, a final standing in third place in the National League with 84 wins and 70 on the lost side. So that's it, man. A home run by Boucher in the sixth inning with one on, turned the tide after the Dodgers had gotten an unearned run in the first inning and the final score, 2-1, to one, the Phil got in front. Jerry, let's see, you uh, did your first Brooklyn ball game on Labor Day last year, right? That's right, Ben. Oh, the the year first plus. full year. And uh, Alan Roth, uh, what about you? How long have you been uh, digging out figures for Brooklyn? Well, I started with the Brooklyn Club in 1947, but I've been on the radio. Uh, Are you that, that old? Well, I guess I am, and I feel it right now. <laughs> Abby, how long have you been uh, piping the game back? Four solid years for Pappy Durkin. And he also did a little bit way back in 39. I'm my Tommy Volante, our producer, since 1952, huh? And it's uh, the end of our eighth year with the ball club. Boy, those years have certainly gone fast. Eight years. Shifty William Herbie have been with us for about 20 years, haven't they? Uh, they've just got out, I believe. <laughs> I don't know where they've been for 20 years. <laughs> well, friends, uh, that's just about it. We don't want to go into a big, long thing here just to let you know that we sure enjoyed working for you all year long. We hope we brought you some enjoyment. I imagine sometime or other we've gotten a little mad at the other end, too. But, too, that's where it goes. We would try it. And now you'd like to remind everybody that this final game, Jerry, was brought to them like every game through 1957 by home. The F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn Penny, Brewers of Schaefer Beer, and all the fine folks at Schaefer who have had a part in bringing the baseball games to the folks this year. And remember, it's America's oldest lager beer. It's real beer. And by Lucky Strike, a light smoke, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. It's made by the American Tobacco Company, and tobacco is our middle name. And, of course, a lot of fine folks in the American Tobacco Company. It's been a real pleasure, Vinny, to be with you and Al and all the Dodgers all during the 1957 season. Our swell sponsors, Schaefer Beer and Lucky Strike, and all the guys here in the booth, Tommy Volante, Alan Ross, Happy Durkin, and uh, 
Both been fine associating with these very, very wonderful Brooklyn Dodger fans all the way, don't you think? That's right, indeed. We want to certainly say hello to our Dodger network, which was really spreading its wings this year for the first time, as well as to all our friends in New York. And uh, all of us here in the booth hope we'll be talking to you in 1958. 57, as far as the baseball season is concerned, and our own personal little duties with the ball club, just about down the drain. So, for the last time, we'll be saying goodbye. And good luck, and we'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. So long.